If you're into spirituality and the concept of surrender, you will love this book. It is easy to read because it is just the author's story of why he decided to do the surrender experiment and then all the wonderful and unexpected things that happened when he surrendered to the flow of life instead of listening to the preferences of his mind to make decisions. One of these unexpected things was building a, wait for it, billion dollar business. I had heard about the concept of surrender from various spiritual teachers and authors and I had a theoretical understanding of surrender, but reading Michael Singer's story of how he surrendered at various points of his life really helped me to practically understand what surrender can look like. This has to be one of the most impactful spiritual books that I have read. For me to get inspired by someone's story, I have to connect to them and relate to them. I was able to connect to Michael because his surrender didn't mean that he sat down and did nothing. He had relationships, he completed his master's and doctorate degrees, he wrote books, he established and grew his temple, and later he grew his one-person business to a billion dollar business he was participating in life fully and accomplishing a whole lot, but not by striving and straining. He did it by surrendering to the flow of life and trusting the flow of life. To give you an analogy, there's two ways you can walk on a windy day. You can walk into the wind because you have a strong preference that that is the direction you want to go. You will be able to move, but it will be hard and you will move a smaller distance. Or you can surrender to the wind and decide to walk in the direction of the wind, even if your mind or ego wanted to go in the other direction. Walking in this direction will be easier as the wind will actually help you move and you will likely move a longer distance in the same time. Similarly, in life, we can be fluid and go where the life takes us, or we can resist life and insist on going elsewhere because our mind tells us that that is where we should be going. If you're liking this video so far, please hit, please hit the like button. It helps other people to find this video. When Michael Singer's surrender experiment started, his mind's desire was to live alone in the woods to deepen his meditation practice and spiritual growth. He wanted nobody to disturb him. He had lost all interest in completing his degree because the only thing that mattered to him was to meditate, to grow spiritually. He had become, in my opinion, perhaps too attached to the identity of a spiritual seeker. Rather, his mind or ego had become attached to thinking that this is the way he wanted to live and this is what would help him grow spiritually. But life had different plans for him. Life sent him one person, then a group of few people who wanted to join him in the woods and meditate with him. His mind of course wanted to resist, but because he had decided to do the surrender experiment, he let them stay. One thing led to the other, and that was the start of the Temple of the Universe, which was built in 1975, which still exists today in Florida. I am so inspired by Michael's story that I'm actually going to visit the Temple of the Universe next week. I just want to experience what it would be like to meet Michael in person and also to feel the energy of the temple where so many mind-blowing synchronicities have happened and so many spiritual leaders have visited as described in the book. I'm also excited to listen to Michael's talks in person and participate in the group meditation and chanting that happens at the temple. I will be sharing my temple experience with, with my private email community. If you want to join my email community, the link to join is in the description below. Going back to Michael's story, he built the temple not because he wanted to or planned to. In fact, his preference was the exact opposite, to meditate alone and away from people. 
but the temple almost built itself because he was surrendering to the flow of life. Similarly, other events happened or people came in his life that caused him to make decisions that were against the preferences of his mind, but he surrendered to where life was leading him. And later he would see big and beautiful and surprising things unfold, which wouldn't have happened had he not surrendered to life. The more he surrendered, the easier it became to surrender because the miraculous outcomes of his previous surrenders were right in front of him. Michael had originally had the idea that meditating alone is what would help him in his spiritual growth, but what actually ended up helping him grow spiritually was interacting with people, having relationships, completing his degree, teaching, building the temple, building one business, then another, and so on. Had he not surrendered to the flow of life, all this would not have happened. I am so inspired to surrender more and more in my own life now. But as Michael has pointed out in his book, we do not need to do exactly what he did. Everyone's journey is unique. So I'm going to try my own surrender experiment in my own way. Unlike Michael, I'm not ready yet to surrender to the extent that he did because he pretty much surrendered for every single decision, big or small. But I think I am going to need to get my feet a little wet first and slowly build up my surrender muscles. The last thing I want to say about this book is that I would recommend you read this book first and then The Untethered Soul, which is another one of Michael Singer's books. The Untethered Soul will make more sense if you have read The Surrender Experiment first. If you have read this book and want to share your thoughts on it, I would love to hear them and so will the other viewers watching this video. So please share them in the comments below. And once again, if you want to join my private email community, the link to join is in the description below. See you!